How great he is. Ah, you may be seated, Israel. Hallelujah. You may be seated. What a great privilege and honor that God grants unto us. As the song says, we must but trust his yard never change. And he grants unto us, he grants unto us, Yisraya, that we may have a confidence that cannot be defied by the opposition of darkness. And that is what his but entails. That we trust our Abba despite death, despite the opposition of the powers that be and the enemy of our nefesh, our being that assault us and assault the integrity of the testimony of Almighty Yan Yoshua HaMashiach. And he has enough confidence in his people, his elect. That speaks tremendous volume, Yisraya, whether we understand that or not. That he has by his own premonition, by his own thoughts, by his own purpose, his own will, elected a people. He elected a people that had no heritage. And out of that he has brought forth a zira, a people, a seed, a lineage. That he has built his estate upon that nation of people. That not only does he trust us, but he gives us the ability for us to trust him. We can trust him despite all opposition. I'm going to sit down tonight, all right? Despite the opposition from the powers of hell. That he has granted unto Yisrael to Batach. To have great confidence in him. To have confidence that cannot be overwhelmed. Nor overtaken by the forces of hell. It is not to say that we will not have challenges. And trials we will be challenged. We are going to have trials. We are going to have affliction. But he has granted unto us as his people. The ability to simply endure. And to have patience. To endure all things. What a great privilege that is Yisrael. I don't despise that. Not me. We can see the condition of the world today and circumstances that are prevailing. Unless we have the strength of Yah, unless we have that assurance, uh, and it must be built by the teaching of Torah. It is one thing that as I was talking with Zachin uh, Dawid there in Baltimore, I said to him, I said, my precious Zachin, we must understand. And the enemy has done a masterful job whereby causing our ozen, our ears, our spiritual ability to interpret what Yah says, that they will be shut. And the only way we're going to have confidence in Yah is that we must hear of his edah, his testimonies of great power, his might. We must constantly hear of that because Imuna. Imuna, his faith, is, comes by hearing. We must shemach. We must shemach. We must hear with a diligent desire to obey. And we must do that, Yisrael. I don't care how my pasty is, that's all right. You can't hear me? Can you all hear me? All right. Hallelujah. All right. Anoint her ears, Yah, that she may hear. I want to speak with the Pacific tonight, Israel, because uh, it is one thing that we as a nation, that we constantly, uh, we are constantly entrapped by this uh, action that Yah permits in our lives, uh, and it is the mach'ob, it is pains. What are the pains that we endure, and what are the reasons behind the pains? It is one thing that the mach'ob or the pains... Uh, it is something that uh, cripple us spiritually, mentally, and physically, whereby our minds cannot function in the obedience uh, of the Torah of Yah, whereby our spiritual, our mental, uh, and our physical equilibrium, uh, the ability to balance what Torah speaks to us, uh, 
according to the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. And when we do not have that ability, when the functions of the power of a Torah is not operating in us, it's because they are great agony, uh, uh, pains that debilitate us, that cripples us, that handicaps us, whereby we began to walk in delusions. And we become disillusioned with Yah. And then our minds and our spiritual mind does not process uh, the living power of Torah the way it ought to. And then we find ourselves uh, dying uh, prematurely. We find ourselves uh, not having confidence in Yah. We find ourselves doubting. Uh, we find ourselves not stable. Uh, and it is because of the mach'ub. Why? And what is the reason for that? I hope to open our eyes to that a little while tonight. All right? And I'm going to move so that I will finish tonight. Is that all right? Hallelujah. I want you to understand from the book of Eob, we know that he had friends. It is amazing that they were his re'ah. They were friends. They were his beloved ones. And you sent them. And these were wise men. These were men equal with Eo. They were wise. They were experienced. They had the ability to, to deduct from Torah. They had it burning in their minds. And yet he had the younger one by the name of Elia. Who, or Elhu. Or Elahu. And yet he was the youngest. And that represents Yisra'ah in this hour that we're in. This represents the firstborn after the resurrection of Yahshua HaMashiach. And yet he waited for the most prominent time to speak. He did not just blur out of his mouth. And many times when we're in situations, we began to question Yah when the mach of the pain, when our spiritual conscience cannot operate inside the context of Torah. And it is one thing that the enemy desires uh, to keep us outside of the parameter of the Torah. And once we began to operate outside the realm of the Torah, the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach, uh, and then we we're going to be overcome. We're going to be overcharged uh, by our own circumstances uh, and situations, Yisrael. And so here this young man, he begins to utter words of great wisdom unto Ehob. And he speaks so indelibly here in the book of Eob, Job, chapter 33, and verse 19. He speaks unto us, Yisra'ah, as he speaks unto Eob. Eob, not only is he a metaphor or a kind of the assembly of the body of Yahshua, he is the ultimate type. Because the seven trials of Eob, it brings him to the new beginning uh, of the revive, refresh, uh, and the rebirth of this man uh, that Yah poured out upon him the blessings uh, that were greater than he had uh, in his first estate. And the blessings and the riches of Yisrael, they're greater than our forefathers of Abraham. They're greater than Yitzhak. They're greater than Yahob. The greater than the blessings that were poured out upon Hepha and Shaul and Tisephaniah. They're greater than that, Yisrael. They're greater because there's one that has bared a tremendous burden of our pain. That we may operate in the fullness of the power of the Torah of Yah. Listen to how this young man speaks unto Eob in Job 33 verse 9. He speaks of the power of Yah, verse 19, Job 33, 19. Uh, he says, this is what Yah does. Uh, he chasten, or he yacha. He judge us. He rebukes us. He corrects us, Yisrael. He reproves us. Uh, he sets us in the order and the discipline of the Torah. So he chasten also... Uh, he chastened us also with machob, with pain. He chastened, he corrects Yisrael with machob. When our spiritual, our mental ability to grasp the circumstance, because of our equilibrium, our understanding of balance, we have no ability to understand the reasoning 
behind this thing that opposed me. So yeah, he uses even the mach'ob, the pains, and the wounds to chasten to yachal, to correct us, to judge us, and to show us that he is the one that is in control and he is the authority. So we cannot discount the pains, uh, how they come. Uh, we don't set them aside and begin to, uh, to ponder and wonder in our mind, uh, what is the reason behind that? Uh, we must understand that in the midst of all of that, that Yah loves those, uh, and those that he has this great desire and love for, he chastens us, Yisrael. He calls us to be judged. He doesn't correct us uh, uh, many times because of our transgressions and our sins in the midst uh, of his wrath and his anger. But he calls us to see that and even in the mach'ob, the pains, uh, it calls us to realize that he is the one that is in control. Uh, and these things that are happening unto us, they are not just by chance. Uh, and when you select us, uh, did he not select Eob? Did he not serenade him before the power of darkness? Did he not say, have you considered him? Did he not offer up uh, Eob? Sure he did. As he did the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. We are the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. We offer up on the stake, Yisrael, and we are going to have to understand that the mach'ob or the pains, the spiritual, sometimes deranged mind, and physical attack, mental attack, spiritual attack, this is part of this life, Yisrael. This is for the great benefit of Yisrael. And so this young wise man, as Yah uttered into his bosom, he begins to speak. He says to Eob, you know that Yah, he corrects us, he reproves, he judges us also with pain. Not just pain alone, he judges us by his assure, his blessings of great delight in our bosom, his berachaya, the abundance of his riches poured out upon us, Yisrael. But also we must understand, don't discount it, also he corrects us with pains as well. We must understand that. He corrects us with pains. So in the midst of all of that, we still give toda unto Yah. We rejoice in the midst of all things. Don't discount it. Don't think that something strange has happened unto you. It is not. He also corrects us. Before we fall into a deep ravine of darkness. And our minds began to escape Yah. So he caused the pains to come. You notice when someone is lying on the bed of pain and affliction, affliction, they tend to have a more clear conscience in their mind. And so it is with us, Yisrael. It is to make our conscience and our minds clear, our thoughts upon him and clear. So he says to Eob that Yah chasing us also. He did not just say alone, also, also. Also, there, there, there is an adamant there. He said, also uh, with machob, uh, with this anguish at times, with this affliction uh, in our minds, in our spiritual being, uh, in our natural being, in our physical, uh, in our mental being. We sense that. And we all sense that. That is the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. We all sense that, but he has given us the remedy uh, how that we may overcome and escape that, Yisra'ya. We shall point that out, all right? Uh, he says, also with mach'ob, or uh, pains and anguish, uh, upon our bed, and the multitude of his bones uh, with a thumb or strong pain. He calls our bones as the bones of Yahshua. Although they were not broken, that there are times that there are a or perpetual, consistent, continuous pains that sometimes you wonder, how do I get over this, Yah? What is the resolution for that? The resolution is simple. You know the things that Yah commands us to do, it doesn't take, uh, it doesn't take an extraordinary type of an attempt. They're simple. They are. It doesn't take no valiant effort to do it. It just take an effort of obedience. And that's what we have to do, Yisra'ya. 
And so he caused the affliction of pain to be upon our bed, and, and they are atam. They are perpetual, they are continuous, uh, and it seems as though that uh, they will not cease. You ever been in that situation? Oh, I know I have, Yisraya. Spiritually and mentally and physically. Uh, sure. We will have those kinds of circumstances. We know that it is the hand of Yah that corrects us. And we don't discount that. There are those that are suffering great agony. And they don't understand the reason behind it, Yisrael. And he, your wit, it's important that you have friends. That's why we must show ourselves freely one unto another. That we may be the friends of Yisrael. It's important to have that. He did not recover until he acknowledged that these were my friends. And when he prayed for them, they did not come there to, to be passies and pander him. They opened up the book of wisdom because they were wise men. They opened up knowledge and understanding to this man. And that's what we need, Yisrael. That's what the Torah is. And when we are in that position of pains and agony, then we must understand that there is a great need uh, that we rely upon the whole body because uh, sometimes this old arm as i said the other day we were planting yesterday we planted nearly 1700 broccolis uh, and cauliflower and i said this airborne mind that thing in the physical sense that thing was in great agony you know, I said the shimmering man, I, if I don't keep it straight, stretched out, I'm in such pain. I don't know what to do, man. I mean, that thing, once you moved it, it was an agony of pain. But I knew that there was a course that we had to finish. And of course, after we finished that course, I said to him, I'm going to do this, this, and that. And he says to me, well, you need to check this, this, and that out because... Uh, I have suffered the same thing when I stopped doing this, this, and that. Then there was some resolution to that. So it is with Yah. When we stop doing this, that, and those things, uh, we will find the resolution, Yisra'ya. It is clear in the Torah, and I want to point that out quickly to us on this, on this beautiful Katve Emet. Hallelujah. This is what Daiweed said. Uh, this, is, this is a very simple remedy here in the book of Tehillim. Uh, Psalms 77 and verse 10. Daiweed said, And I uttered a, a mouth from my voice. Uh, Daiweed said, This is my halab. This is uh, my infirmity. I become weak. I become shallow. I become shattered. Uh, I have no power. I am without strength. He said, this is my infirmity. I am diseased, I am sick, and I am full of pain. Do you hear that, Yisrael? Listen to him. He said, but I, Zechah, but I will remember. I will call the Zikron, the memorial, the memory. But I remembered the shonith, the years of the right hand of the Most High. He said, in the midst of all of my great delirious, my delirious delusions, uh, in the midst of all of my khala, he said, I resorted back to the former years, uh, the days of the right hand, uh, of the testimony of Yah in Yeshua, of my birthright, of whom I am of my strength, of my heritage. As we were seen, take me back, Yah. We must go back to the better sheet, Yisra'ah. And we must remember the form of things. He said, I remember the way of the right hand, the yummy, the strength of Yah, the assurance of his deliverance, how he brought us out. Even though we were afflicted, we had strength to become strong, to move beyond the perils, when our minds were afflicted by the opposition, when our thoughts were opposed even by us. I remembered, as I call it to come to my mind uh, and to think of the form of things. Uh, look what he did for you yesterday. He brought you through life. You Come on. Look at your child in your arms uh, and the breath of life and strength uh, and the beauty of that strength. Come on. 
He said, I remembered when I became weak. When the Hala I became sick. When I became diseased. When I became painful. That is what the Hala is. He said, I had to go back. I had to go back. And once I went back, I realized what I seen the, the itinerary of Eeyore, what he had to endure, what I've seen the hand of Yah, what he has brought me from. When you see what Yah has done, you realize that you have no power to bring breath into your loins. It is by the command of Yah. We must always go back and remember. We must go back and remember the right hand, Yoshua, the Rafa of your Yisrael. He has not caused the Mechob to destroy us, to bring us down, to make us uh, as though that he is not su- significant or sufficient in our lives. He has not done that. He just corrects us. When mama put the scriptures a little pain, but it's correction, isn't it? It reminds him of his birthright. It reminds her of her heritage and the right of her heritage. That's what it does. So we just start remembering, Yisrael. Just start remembering with the pain. Just remember. Hallelujah. Just remember what he has already done. Remember where it's brought you from. When, from when your heart is afflicted, when your mind, when, when, the, when the assault of hell come against you, when you feel the agony above all in your spiritual being, whereby there is, no, there is no desire to hear Torah, there is no pressing to hear Torah, then you remember what he did for the house of Yisrael. You remember that you zakah, you, you allow it to be a memorial, and allow it to be played over and over and over and over in your mind. You began to see the right hand of your Yisrael, began to see your right, your birth, your birthright as an elect. Chosen of Almighty Yah, that's on the right hand of His protection uh, and His covering in Yeshua Hamashiach. Yeah. Just remember that, Yisrael. Yeah. It is not something that is so taskful for us. Uh, it's an easy thing. He has not made it hard for us. It's easy. When he saw the color upon him. He simply remembered. That's all. Uh, when he saw the hand of Yah, we remember his infirmities, his challah. He just remembered. He just went back and remembered. He said, that's all he did. He just remembered what Yah had done. That's all we have to do, Yisrael. It is not the offering that you offer up. It is just, uh, it is just uh, your mind where it is, uh, where your mind is. We must go back and remember. That's all we have to do. It's not difficult. Uh, it's not hard for us. Uh, not at all, Yisrael. He simply remembered. And that's what we must do as well. We must remember. As the old kid would say, remember where he, I remember where he brought me from. It was a long ago, so we must do that. I want to lay down those two points because I want to move here in the book of Eob Job again, 517. This is when Eliphaz, he began to speak profoundly. And his name meant just what it was. Eliphaz, uh, uh, it simply implies that Yah is my pure gold, he is my riches. And that's what the Torah must mean unto us. The riches of Yah. The book of Eob chapter 5. And I would have begun in verse 17. Hallelujah. He urges Eob even in the midst of all of his calamities. Uh, and the great battles that he is in. Uh, that if he is not a sinner. One that defies Yah. He doesn't have to worry about the ultimate ruins of destruction. And if we know that we are not participating uh, in sin with a willfully practiced Yisrael, these things are not to ruin us. But if we are practicing defiance and disobedience uh, unto Yah, then we better worry. We better worry, Yisrael. So it was not something to bring about a delusion unto Ehob, it was to strengthen him. Man, uh, you speak with such profound utterance uh, and with such wisdom. Uh, you know that Yah has not brought you to this position uh, to destroy you. He has not brought us here to destroy. He has not allowed circumstances to intervene in our lives. Uh, it is to make us stop, stand still, uh, that we may see the you're sure the salvation of Yah. And after we've done all we can do to stand, let us just still stand. Stand in the Torah, stand in the confidence of what is already written. And you take your mind back to remember. 
to Zachar. It becomes a zikron, a memorial in your heart, in your mind, Yisrael. Eliphaz speaks here to Eob. Profoundly, he utters. Uh, Eob 5.17. He says, I want you to hear or see, understand spiritually with the wisdom of Yah. Behold, he says, uh, he uses the word Esha, the riches of Yah, the blessings, the fullness of Yah's riches and blessings according uh, to his Brit, his covenant. It is vitally important we understand the Hebraic expression of things. It brings a Torah enrichment to the knowledge of Torah. You understand, Yisra'ya? So he said, I want you to see, uh, Esha is the man whom Yah whom Yah reproves, whom the man that Yah tries and prove that he is a man, prove that she is an enriched Bath of Tizayon. That's what he said. So these things don't allow them to discourage you and to rob you of uh, your zigron, your testimony. That you remember, Yisrael, and that you go back and remember. He says unto this precious man, therefore, he said, don't ma'az, don't despise, don't hate, don't, don't refuse. In essence, Ma'az is, don't refuse Yisra'ya. He said, don't despise my friend Eyob, the Musa or the discipline, the correction uh, of the most powerful. Uh, the one that is most powerful. Uh, he said, don't despise it. Do not Ma'az. Even though these Mach'ob, the pains, uh, it seems as though that they cripple us and paralyze us. What are you saying, man? You can't pray. You don't know how to press through. You don't know how to overcome. You don't even know how to get over that circumstance. The only way you're going to get over that, you've got to go back. You've got to go back to the way that he brought you, Yisrael. When there was great opposition, look, even though in all of our ignorance... We began to journey down the highway, embarking upon the highway, that's Sadiq. We went through great perils and great trials, and yet Yah kept you on that. You became more refortified with strength and assurance because you will look back at what he had brought you out and the miseries of the pains that you endured and what you brought to his heart. And so you knew that these pains, the pains of rejection, the pains of, uh, of being weak and, and being overcome, uh, you simply remember it. When your flesh fell you on every behalf, you had no confidence, could find no confidence in anyone or no one, Yisrael. You would go back. And the weeping of the midnight cries upon your bed, uh, the weeping of tears, you will go back. That's why we must go back. So don't refuse it, Yisrael. Don't refuse, don't try to reason, uh, why is this? Uh, when Yah was there, uh, when he counsels us, uh, according to his discipline, uh, he corrects us, even with the rod of correction, don't despise it. Don't refuse it. It is almost more like I was a child uh, when I tried to get stiff and stubborn when my mother would correct me uh, and I would defy and say, I'm not going to cry. It will cause even the pains uh, to come even more swift. And somehow she could find strength in that arm. And she would break me. So don't cry, Yisra'ya. Don't refuse it above all. Don't refuse. Do not ma'az. Don't reject it. Don't reject the correction of Yah. He corrects you because he loves you. The mach of the pain, that is just, uh, that, that, he, he identifies this specific kind of pain. Uh, and I want to deal with that uh, and some of, the, so, some of the aspects of it. Uh, how it flows into our lives. Uh, and the reason sometimes we have pains. Uh, it's almost like the mother or the father saying to the child, don't touch that. And they still defy that and touch it. And then they began to feel the pain. Mother, uh, the ema of the avat popped the hand in. Ah! We all experience that, haven't we? So our pains in Yahshua HaMashiach, we all experience the same pains. 
We all experience the same mach'ob. Don't think that your pains are any greater than someone else's. That is the characteristics of weakness. I was speaking to one <clears throat> this past Yom Rishon, <clears throat> and we were discussing the identity of pain. <clears throat> but I said, you know, there are those that endure great affliction and great pain. There are those that really are truly dedicated to your young baptists, your young daughters, and they endure much. And yet through all of that, they have no husband, they have children, they're in poverty. They don't even enjoy the type staples as you enjoy. And yet they have the presence about them. They're able to press, they're able to show the word Esha is the bountiful blessings of Yah that produce a happiness unto Yisra'ya, not a phony grin and smiling uh, and they're about the tizayon uh, that they're able to endure the afflictions and they walk uh, through the corridors of their pains uh, without murmuring or complaining without uh, segregating or, re or, or removing themselves from the body of Yisra'ya uh, but we tend to do that we want to go to our own little place and find our own little, little corner that's not what Yah wants listen to this was not Eob in great pain? He was not segregated, was he? He was among friends. And there's nothing like a friend. You may be wounded, but there's healing in the tongue of a friend. You understand? Yes, that I, yeah? Hallelujah. He goes on to say, I'm going to move quickly. He says, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm glad he said, uh, therefore despise not... Uh, the very power of the most powerful one. And only, uh, the word Esha, it, it means this as well. It means that the one that, ha that is superior has power to bestow the riches uh, of his power, of his, of his riches upon you. So it is Yah that has the power to bestow that upon us. Uh, and you tell me that is one of the courses he go through by some pain? Let us move on. We will find out. Zakhen Yeramaya would say. Verse 18, Yah... He makes ha'a, bruises and sores. Well, that's not so. He does. He does. Yah, he makes ka'ab, and he also habash, he binds you up, he girds your mind, he governs our mind, habash, is to govern our minds according to the healing power of the Torah. He also habash, he governs, he heals. He restores Yisra'ya. He binds us up. Do you hear that? He calls the pains. And ma, he binds you up. He mollifies your ruach, your nefesh. He sent the balm of Gilead upon you. He anoints your head with fresh oil. That's all right, Yisra'ya. We cannot complain. We must simply begin to understand. We all need to understand. We all need to be picked up. We need to go farther, as the old ones would say, I want to go deeper and deeper with depths and depths into the knowledge of Yah. They didn't know what they were saying, but they knew that the place that they were in, that there were greater riches than that. And only he has the power to assure, to bestow that upon us. No one else. I don't have that power. Neither do you, Yisra'ah. It's not about just sitting in offering of ten, fifty, hundred dollars. Uh, Yah has the Esha, the power to bestow the Esha. He is the only great and the most powerful one. Yisraya, hallelujah. 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 He is the one that bruises us or Chaab. And he is the one that Habash. He is, the, he is our healer. He also Mahats. You tell me, he wounds us. He smites us. He calls us to be shattered. He calls us to be broken. He breaks us down and we wonder and our minds cannot grasp whole to that matter. He does that. And it is one thing that died. We said, I remember his right hand. Eliphaz says, uh, he does all that. And also, and his hand, Yisra'ya, his hand makes us rafa, makes us whole, Yisra'ya. It is his hand that not only that makes us helpful, we have the health of Yah, but above all, the Rafa is that it is his hand that restores his favor upon Yisra'ah. When we have fallen and there is no one to bear us up, it is his hand 
to restore his favor and to say, you're still mine, that's all right. When we have not fell, when we have fallen prostrate, when we have fallen under the, the weight of our flesh, it is the hand of Yah that Rafa to restore us. It is his hand that restores us unto his Daba, his promises, Yisraya. You tell me you wound me, man, and he says, I wound you because uh, I will want you to have confidence. I want you to have Baltaka that my right hand will heal you. Your sure heals us. It is the power of that testimony. We don't doubt it. Don't doubt it, Yisraya. Don't, don't doubt it. I don't care how rosy things may look, we may perceive, but don't doubt that testimony. Don't doubt that. Lay your life down for that. You may have perceptance that thing look, things may look so grandizing, but don't, don't sell the testimony of that power of your sure Hamashiach. Don't sell it. Don't sell it, Yisraya. Not even for your life, because it is the power to overcome. He caused us to go through that in his, his hands. That rough, uh, that's all right. I need, if you don't need this, this don't, you don't. I, I need this one tonight. I, this is for me. You understand? I was over there the other day and y'all the words just rose up in my bosom. Pain. And I couldn't wait. I couldn't find time to get home to study. Because I was driving those steep posts like a mat man. Isn't that right, Yosef? I don't play around, do I? Get out of my way, man, and don't talk to me. That's the truth. I don't have time for talking when I'm working. Put the post up, man. Let me drive it in. John Henry, we have a labor to do, but I knew that I wanted to get back just for a few moments. When I got back home, I just saw one, this here in Eob. I said, that's enough. I can go on this now. I know where I need to go from here, right? Hallelujah. He's going to make us fat tonight, Yisraya. I'm moving on in your sure's mighty name. Hallelujah. Again, let me read that first in verse 18. For Yah makes bruises a source. He is the one that caused us to be kaha, but he also habash. He is the one that governs uh, uh, those bruises. He is the one that said, no, that's enough right there. Ah, uh -uh, that's enough. That the wound is deep enough. You remember Zakin Yeramaya, he taught us, and all these Akzakin Birminda. I was telling Zakin, I was telling my Akshimri, that, that message he preached, that I was looking the other day, and someone, it, it, the message was a great delicacy of riches to that individual. Because the only thing they said, when someone says it like this, you know it has a great substance to them. Uh, they said, thanks. That's all they said. It's almost like the little one that said, Toda. They said the man said, Toda. He just said, Toda, man, Toda, ach, shimri. He just said, man, thanks. That's all right there. When someone says it like that, you know that something uh, has been fair to that individual. You know that they have been enriched. He just said, thanks, man. As when I read that, all the compliments of all the other, that was the most, I'm telling you, Yisraya. I had one write me today and said that, I am not you, Reach David. I am a true Hebrew Israelite. And you are a devil. And I'm watching you. Well, watch me, man. You're going to waste your time watching me. You must be awful boring because I am boring. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me move this quickly again. All right. For Yah is the one that bruises us. He also governs us. He girds us about with his Torah. He wounds us, so he machats, uh, he calls us to be shattered severely, and his hands makes us whole. It makes us rafa, it restores us back to his favor, Yisraya. Also, the body, he shall nasal, he shall deliver you. He shall deliver you in six troubles, and the agony of your bosom, or sarah. We're coming to the seventh trouble of time. It is known as the great other Gadol Sarah, the great tribulation, Yahoob uh, Zarah. So he delivered us in six trouble. And this last trouble that we shall be encountered by, come on, Yisraya. He says, Yes, in seven, there shall no evil touch you. He said, the evil man shall not touch you. The mark of your mind shall be marked by the insinuation and the lies and the corruption. 
and the murdering spirit of the evil one. No evil, no ra, no evil thing, no evil conscience, no evil concept shall touch you. They shall not even come nigh unto you, Yisra'ya. So we don't discount our mach'ob or the pains. We don't take them as though that these are not valid or unimportant because they're very important. So we're coming to the perfection. Blessed are those that come to those last 45 days. Only then those will be able to offer up the offering that is pure unto you. Because there's an offering that once we began to offer up the simple offering, we're going to see the great remedy of Yah. We're going to see it, Yisrael. As I proceed on, hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 20, it says... In famine, uh, in the Ra'ab, in this great uh, agony of hunger, in famine, uh, he shall pada, not redeem. Uh, he's going to preserve you. How do you preserve one when there's famine? He says in pada, he's going to preserve you when your nefesh seem as though it is famish. When it seems as though that you can't even eat from the Torah, he has uh, the additives there to preserve you. He has already placed it there. He has uh, imparted into Yisra'ya the seven, uh, uh, the Shaba or the Sheba, the seven spirits of Yah, Yisra'ya. In famine, he shall redeem you, he shall pada. He say, you from death or from the, uh, from the, uh, the mooth or the ember or, or the death that is, uh, that is prematurely. He is going to preserve you from death uh, and in war from the power of uh, the sword. That's why Yahshua sure commanded us, Yisra'ya, that we are Barak, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst. In this day of famine, we must hunger and thirst after Yahshadik. He said, Barak are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness or, or the Sadiq of Yah. He said, for they shall uh, be filled. That's, he could speak that because uh, he knew what Yah said here in the book of Eo because he is the power. He is the strength of that truth uh, for he is that truth. Uh, and these damn bastards of hell, I didn't want to go that way tonight. Uh, and that rejects him, woe unto these devils. Uh, they're vile and they are wicked. He's going to deliver us. And in the seventh trouble that we shall endure, we shall be complete. Because there will be no confidence of relying upon our flesh. We will know that these pains and the agony of this pain, it is Yah's way of refining and proving that we are the true zira of Yisra'ya. Not the lies of the raptor. You're not going to be cut up out of nothing. You're a damn liar. And these false men that tell you these lies, they are false. He said in the seventh trouble, in all of that, he's going to he's going to preserve you. He didn't say he was going to take you out of there. Why? Because uh, we don't stand in our own street. We stand in the assurance of his Torah and the word. We have this in us. So we stand on this. We stand firmly on this. So when the opposition comes, uh, we're not going to uh, renege because he shall never renege. Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look what he shall do in verse 21. Isn't this beautiful? He is going to haba. He shall hide. Not just hide. That's what our, grand, uh, our great grandparents and our forefathers did. They would chaba. They would do things in a way they would hide their little money secretly. It would be always before your eyes, but you could not see it. So he is not just going to hide us. There are thieves that break in and they, and they rob you of that what you think you've hidden. But it is going to be Yah that's going to Chaba. He's going to hide us in the secret of his truth. He reveals his truth or his power of his truth unto those that fear him, Yisra'ya. That's who reveal his secrets unto those that trust and fear Yah. Hallelujah. So we shall be hid, we shall be Chaba. From the scourge of the tongue, those that oppose and speak, why do you do this? Why are you continuing this way? I'm speaking to Zachin Yeshurand, and he says to me, he doesn't mind me saying this. He was on 12 medications. He said, Rhea, the more I took them, the sicker I became. I was sick. There was agony. He said... And the Torah of Yah, the confidence, the testimony of Yahshua, rose in my bosom. 
And he said, I will not defy what Yah speaks unto me. Nothing, no one is going to remove me from this course. And I've seen the hand of Yah upon him in a mighty way. Hallelujah. By the way, he's going to be moving down here next month. He and his Ishaw. We've already found them a place right across the street here. And they'll be moving down from Detroit, Michigan. Yabrach, my Zakin. Hallelujah. Look what he says. Isn't this wonderful that Yah hides us in the bosom of his heart, in his Torah, in his word? We're here in Yahshua Hamashiach. He will hide us from the scorch of the tongue. Neither shall you be afraid of destruction when it comes. You're not going to be afraid of the massive destructions. And even when the enemy comes to try to destroy the testimony, you won't be afraid. You will not yira. You will not, you will not flee and run, Yisra. You will not be afraid. He says in verse 20, he shall hide them in the set or in the secret place of his presence, his poor name. Now that's profound there. If, if I read nothing profound in this book, he's going to hide Yisra'ya in his poor name, in his presence. In the presence of Yah is fullness of his uh, Isha. And in the right hand of Yah there are pleasures evermore. But this is how he's going to hide us uh, from the wicked and from the scourge of their tongue. Uh, from those that oppose us uh, to try to agonize us even though we're in pain. He's going to hide us in the secret of his ponim, in his presence, in his face. His face will be upon us, and his face shall shine from us, Yisra'ya. We shall be the gleaning reef. We shall glean the, re the, 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 the revelation or the revealing of the presence of Yah's face in our face. When they see our face, they will see the face of Yah. And that's the truth. He's going to hide us, Yah, in the secret, in the seta, in that protection of his presence uh, is like a daddy saying, boy, you stay right here. And the bully is talking all the talk, but as long as he's in the presence of daddy, he's all right. As a young lad, we would fight. And those that were much more bona fide than I, when my bigger brothers would come, uh, that gave me a bonus. As long as they were there looking on, uh, there was somebody that would rise up in me. And I would do the thump Johnson then. I will put some hurting on them. You understand? Get home and my oldest brother, one of them, is there. What's wrong? Come out here. He wants to fight me most of the time they will run. <laughs> and that's what the enemy is going to do. The wicked flee will no man pursue them. You said in my presence, uh, even the powers of hell shall flee. Uh, they will, shall not mock you in your agony. They didn't do that to Yahshua, did they? Because they could not. So he's going to hide us. He's going to hide us in the secrets of, in the seta or the secrets of his presence, in his poor name. He's going to hide us there, Yisra'ya. And that's a beautiful blessing. He said, I'm going to hide you in my presence from the pride or the, or the very agony, the snares, the plot, the pride of man. He said, you shall keep them uh, Safan, you shall keep them secretly. Uh, it shall be a treasure. It shall be stored up for you. Uh, he said, in a pavilion, uh, in the sukkah. That's why sukkah or the sukkah is so important. Uh, that's why he hides us. Uh, even Yisra'ya. We're here in the sukkah. He's going to hide us in, in his pavilion. It doesn't say that. You know, a sukkah is simply a temporary thing. It's temporary. And it was meant for seven days. You build it. You don't build it 30 days before the gathering. It must be built during the time or the week before that. And then it was a temporary a place to gather. So he's going to hide us there. We will not rely upon the, the resolution of our own natural ways, our own natural mind. We will rely upon the feeding of his bread, the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. That shall be our bread. That's not the bread we need, Yisra'ya. Don't let these pride ones of lies and corruption try to rob you of that testimony. Don't let them rob you of your sure mighty name. There's no power or no name that we can confess in but the name of Almighty Yah. And that's the truth. These ignorant children of hell, 
They are trying to confuse the people. They make, uh, they put more burden upon them uh, than it actually should be. Uh, and they think that they have some dynamics of truth. They don't have a thing, Israel. Can I proceed a little farther? I shall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 22, at destruction or at the short or the havoc of great uh, uh, misery and destruction, oppression uh, and devastation, whereby the ruins uh, of the matter cannot be de destroyed by meanings. Uh, he says in destruction uh, and in kafan and famine, when you're hungry and there's a great emptiness there in the midst of all of that, he said, you shall so hak. You're going to laugh. This is what you brought me. Uh, uh, it shall be a laughter of great rejoicing. And all of that, when you feel as though you're empty, when you have a sense of famine, kafam is that you're empty, that there's not enough to fill you. When it seems as though that you're empty and there's nothing there, Yah says you're going to uh, sohach. You're going to rejoice. You're going to laugh with the merry arousing of the confidence of his right hand, of the most powerful one that is able to heal you and to redeem you. Regardless of the mahub, of the pain, of the circumstances that try to cause agony in your mind, your ruach, and your physical, and your mental being. Regardless of that, Yisra'ya, in all of that, you shall laugh. He says, don't be, yare, don't be afraid, Yisra'ya. Don't think it's strange uh, of the fiery trials that shall fire you, try us. Don't, he said, don't, don't think it's strange. It is not a strange thing. Uh, he said, neither shall you be afraid of the beasts of the earth. You're not going to be afraid of the false uh, religious corrupt teachings of lies. Uh, you're not going to be afraid of this bohemoth, those, uh, the spirit that oppose Yah. It is, the, it is the mark of one that is in total opposition of Yah. He said, don't be afraid of that. And we have a beast that we must all contend with. He's getting us ready. He's getting us ready, as the old one would say, for the great day. He's getting us ready for the great battle. He's getting us. So he's correcting us in the process. And we have the sense of these mechob, uh, of the pain, uh, whereby our equilibrium, our balance sometimes is shattered. We don't know which way to turn. We don't know which way to go. Just turn back to the way that you remember. Turn back to the counsel of Yah and remember in, in your faithful obedience to uh, that counsel how Yah bring, brought great resolution to you. How he brought this great shalom. Uh, how he brought uh, the healing to you. Just go back to that Yisra'ya. Go back to that. And once you begin to go back to that it's going to cause you to do this. That we tells us here. Hallelujah. In the book of Dibarim. Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. I like this here. It says in the book of Tehillim Dibarim. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, to helium, Psalms, Psalms. Psalms to helium, to helium 118 and verse 5. This is all we must do. Hear me, Yisrael. That we said, I call, or I chara. Not this quiet call, but he said, I uttered. And the word chara means to utter with a loud, Voice. That's something that the enemy has removed us away from. He said, I cry. I cry. When people are in agony, they cry, don't they? They cry out. There's a deep supplication. See, this is it here. We think it's something that is of a great, uh, of a great monumental thing we must do. It's a simple thing. He said, I cry. I cry. It's almost like one when, when one hears of a certain tragedy, they just moan and cry. It is a relief to them. It is of a great strength. Sure it is. Sure it is. And in the midst of all of that, through all of the agony, when they think they can't get any rest or sleep, they get rest, don't they? Sure they do. Sure they do. There's nothing like that. He said, this is what I did. He said, uh, I chara upon you in my meza, in my distress, uh, in my great pain. The meza is Pain. It is a pain that you are stressful. You are in a strait. That's what he said. In my mesa. In my mesa. He said, I, cry, I call upon you in distress. In great agony of pain. In great tyranny of pain. He said, and Yahweh Almighty Yah, he not. He answered. Allah is to say he responded. He testified. He spoke. 
He said, I cry in all of my, may sigh in all of my pain of distress. And he answered me. He responded. You see how easy that is? Isn't that so easy? But child calling upon the Emma, the Avada, distress, they don't answer. Tell me. What child cries at, and the Emma, the Avada, doesn't move. They move in a disturbing manner. They run. It is the truth, my friend. I want to read that one again for me. He said, I call, I uttered a loud voice. It was so loud. I uttered, I kara, I uttered a loud voice. I cried upon Yah in my mesa. And mesa is pain that is afflicted because of the strait or the stress you're under. It's in your Hebraic dictionary. That's what it means. I look up every word just about. He said, I cried in my mesa in this pain of great strait. You've been in a position whereby you can't even move because the pain was so great. Come on, Yisraeliah. Whether it was a spiritual, mental, or physical pain, you've been in those positions. He said, but when I cried to Almighty Yah, he lets us know that he Anna. He did not, he Anna, he testified. He responded, he Anna, he answered. He spoke. He caused the heavens to shout. His Anna, he caused... When you're sure in the midst of all of that great agony and all of that great pain, what he said, to, it is finished. Did not Yah speak? Did not the earth, the old lamb? Did not the earth, the darkness of Yah's indignation of wrath? Did it not speak, Yisraeliah? Was that not a stray, a stress, a mesa? And yet Yah responded. So the enemy does that. That's why he doesn't want us to cry out to Yah. That's why he wants us to be quiet, but we've got to cry out. If I wasn't sitting here, I would show you how to do it, all right? Hallelujah. But we must cry out. We must miss. Uh, we, must, we must cry out. We must cry in our miss. In all of our distress, we must cry out unto Yah. And then he will, uh, nah, he will answer us. He will speak to us. His Torah will speak to us of the way that he's brought you. As he brought them uh, through the great agony of the wilderness. Uh, as they traverse uh, even around their enemies. As the old woman said, he brought us out. Oh, he brought us from a mighty long way. Sure, they will sing that. Even when they were down, they will go back. Oh, he brought us oh, from a mighty long way. Oh, he has. He has kept me oh, from all evil. Why? Because my mind will oh, stay on your cure. Oh, 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 he has brought me a mighty long, oh, a mighty long way. Sure he has. We keep that mind on him. He'll bring us a long way, Yisrael. The pains will not override us and cause us to be delusional. He's brought us. He brought us out of bondage into his marvelous light. What a great blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a great blessing, Yisrael. Hallelujah. I want to move here quickly with this prayer of Shulomo. I think it's vital to hear. Dibarim. I'm sorry, it is in 2 Dibra Hayamim or 2 Chronicles. I want you to hear this prayer. As Shulomo blessed, he brought the house when he had finished the bed of Yah that he had built. And he makes this prayer, and this is some of the wording of that prayer. Second Chronicles chapter 6 and verse 26. Hallelujah. I want to finish on time. All right. Hallelujah. It says here in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 6 verse 26. Shalomo says when the Shemayim or the heavens, uh, it is asa or shut. When Yah has restrained or kept back, when it is shut up, there are times we have a sense that is shut. It is asa, it is shut. And though that the hand of Yah or his voice doesn't speak to us, Yisra'ya. He says, and there is no matah, no rain. There's no outpouring of the Ruach HaKodash. 
There's no power of the Ruach of your reign is a revival. My Simeon says to me today, we must, in order for him to respond that way, he had to walk the garden. He had to see and to know what was taking place. We must put some water on this. And so as we dwell among each other, we know where there must be some rain is needed. And we had to pump some water. And we need that living water from the living well. And the only way we're going to get that, we must have this testimony in our bosom, Yisraya. Listen. He said, the heavens when there is no nata, no rain. Why? Because uh, we have hata against Yah, when we have sinned. When there's no rain, when there's no power, the Ruach HaKodesh, when it seems as though that uh, our prayers are not heard unto Yah, let us consider and remind ourselves of our actions. That's all you have to do. Uh. No, you just have done wrong, Yisrael. That's all we have to do. I will show us the remedy here. When the heavens, uh, he says, uh, yes, says, yet if they, if we as a nation, if you as a nation, you as a people or as an individual, he says, if we will just simply pray to make the offering, uh, and that is what the bed represents, the dwelling place of Yah. If we make this pala toward this place, and he says, we must, yeah, that we must confess your name. No, I don't care what no one says. We must confess the name of Almighty Yahweh. In our prayer, we must confess his name. You cannot confess a dog of a God, a pagan of a Christo. This is what he said. If we confess his name, he is the most powerful. It is his right hand that rough for us. He said, if you just confess his name and just turn from your sin, shoob, just turn away. Just say, I'm not going to do it. Great is the power of his testimony in me uh, than the witness of the world. Just turn from your sin. Say, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to transgress the Torah. I'm not going to deny or denounce you. That's all we have to do, Yisrael. It's not a, it's, you don't have to climb Mount Everest. He says, just shoot, turn. Just turn, just turn. Turn your heart from it. Turn your mind from it. Turn your will from it. He says, uh, and just turn, Yisrael. Pray and turn. You confess. And you turn from your sin. When you do, when Yah does on us, when he calls uh, the mech of the pain, when he calls pain, when he correct us, when he Chasing us, just turned. It's nothing like a child when the parents or the parent began to spank the child, uh, and then they immediately, when they cried, almost bring a quick resolution, doesn't it? It does. It's nothing like a tenderness of one when one. I don't like the arrogance of anyone when they can identify their sins. Uh, when one will say, "You know, I was wrong." Now that breaks me more than anything. But when you want to, as Jimri experienced me today. I was in the store and I was running to get out of the store. I don't like being in those stores. He and I, we had to pick the things up. And so as I was proceeding to the line, here was this Mexican woman. She had a child. You know how they let their little children just run haywire. They do. And so she's standing there. She's not in line. So I'm thinking I would jettison past her to get out of this place. And so she saw what I wanted to do, so I stopped. I, I did not, I wanted to give her the chance to get in line. And she says, no, come, you go. Thank you, ma'am. When I got in line, this woman, she looked like a big bull dagger. She said, she was, she was, there. She was before you. Because I didn't say anything to the heifer, this cow. She wasn't a heifer, this bull. And so I'm putting our things on the conveyor and this bull of a beast turned and when she said, I said, you messed up now, cow. I said, you may be a rude pig, but I'm not. And don't you even confront me, you beast of a thing. This beast trying to confront me. I said, you may be rude, woman. Yeah, I was told. I said, you, you, I said ma'am, you may be rude. But I'm not rude and curled like you, you understand? Uh, 
because everything has quiet. They got quiet. You saw this big thing talking like that. Yeah, reprove her. Shut your mouth, woman. You're not going to respond. You may do that with that little thing you call a husband. You're not going to do that with me. I will not let you do that with me. As long as she was quiet, just I'll let you get by with that, but don't do that again. And so she calls herself in her bodaciousness, looking like a big buffalo. You mess with the wrong man. And what I did that I said, she knew to shut her mouth. She got quiet. She did. She didn't respond. Of course, the lady in the check out, well, how are you, sir? I said, I'm just fine. Had to slay this beast, this big beast. I'm fine. I'm excellent. You don't have to ask me how I'm doing. I'm, and uh, you saw how much money we spent, so that's, that's all that matters. I'm not here for, to, to appease you, and to, uh, whether I'm doing fine or not, what difference does that make? The man that owned this place of establishment, uh, he wants you to be nice to me, to make him money, all right? And if you be nice to me, you don't have to worry about me. Just don't mess with me, buffalo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not giving her nothing, nothing more hideous. Well, you have to be meek. I was meek. Because if I had been a fool, I'd have broke the buffalo's neck. And then you string up and butcher her. That's what she looked like. Hallelujah. I'm not going to hit anybody. I'm not going to jail. I think I'm going to jail and put us in a position like that. No, ma'am. My words are enough. I want to close in a moment. All right, hallelujah. He said, just confess and acknowledge his name. In verse 27, he said, then hear you. Then Yah, then hear you. Then you will hear from Hashemayim. And then Yah, he will shalach. He will forgive. He will pardon. When a man gets a pardon, his slate is clean. You can call it out. He will shalach. He will pardon the sins of your sin of your abbot, your servants, and your people, Yisra'ya, when you have Yara, we have taught, taught them the excellent way. There's only one tough way, and that's the Torah way. Let no one kid us, Yisra'ya. We're not going to receive the excellent benefits of the tough benefits of Yah, trying to walk in doctrines and teachings that are not according to the way, according to Haderech, the path that Yah has ordained. Your sure is the way. He is the truth, and he is the life. We must go that way. We must, by the power of that testimony. And we have many that are negating and reneging uh, and rejecting his name. One of the most vilest beasts that are allowed to stand in this, in this rostrum. Says that Yahshua is a joke. You think I want his fellowship? I won't even talk to a dog like that. I won't. I, I'm not going to appease one like that. I'm not going to grin and laugh with one like that and say, well, I know he believes this way. No. Two cannot walk together unless they be in agreement. And I'm not in agreement with these pigs. Hallelujah. I don't want to go that way, but I had to get that in. Wherein they should walk and sin rain upon your land, which you, Yah, have given to your people for an inheritance. He has given us a nachlala, an inheritance, a possession, and riches, Yisra'ya. And not only that, he says, if there be ra'ab, or there be famine, death, death and pain, and hunger in the land, if there be pestilence, if there be the blasting or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, if their enemies besiege them in the city or in the land, or in their land, of their land, or if there be any plague or sickness, any kind of mach, any kind of disease or pain, if there be any, this is Yah, he says, then whatever to fill a prayer or what supplication soever shall be made of any man of all your people, Yisra'ya, when every man shall know his Oh, his own pain, his own agony, his own disease, his own mark, Yisra'ah, and his own grief. The word grief again, it is the mechob. When we shall know our own pain, if we do as Yah command us, we recognize our own pain and shall spread forth his hands. See, just spread forth your hand. In this bed, he says, 
then you're going to hear from the heavens of your dwelling place. And he is going to shalach, forgive and pardon us. And render to every man according to his ways whose love you know, Yah. He knows our living. He knows our rising up and our sitting down and our lying down. For only you know the love of the children of man. So what he said, if we are sincere, we spread our hands in his house, in his presence. That's why he would that all men everywhere lift up Kadosh hands and pray. He said, we just spread our hands. He said, according to your love, he will grant it. He said, I'll take care of it. I don't care who the man is. He said, I will, I will handle that situation for us. When your pains, your make over so profound, just do. He said, that ain't difficult, is it? That's not hard, Israel. It's very easy. It's not complex. Come on, Israel. He said, grant according to the Levim. Hallelujah. 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 Did I not just read us a promise from Yah? The Nobi Yeremi Yah, his utterance, he speaks this, that we must trust in the promises of Yah. Yeremi Yah, Jeremiah, 30 and 12. We must trust. And he speaks to encourage us. We just lift up our hands and pray and spread our hands and say, Yah, you know, you know, you know my Ima, uh, Eunice, you know, I talk to me at times. I would never talk to Zakin Yaramaya, Zakin Birmi, when I talk to me. I would never do that to anyone. Because I say some things and I say it out loud. Sometimes I used say, What do you say? I say, oh, don't, don't worry about it. Just, just, I, I, talk, I talk to me in a way, it's, it's just how, how deplorable uh, I am. And yeah, he sees something that I could never see. As far as my flesh that dwelleth, nothing is not worth, I won't say it's not worth a damn, it's not worth a damn. That's a fact. And I talk to me that way. I talk to me that way. I will never talk to your safety the way I talk to me. I will never say the things to you that I say to me and about me. I will never do that, I'm telling you. So he speaks here with the word of great encouragement here in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 12. He says, for this, um, uh, this utters Yah, this is what Yah says to us. He says, your Sheva are your bruises, the crushing, the pain, the agony. For your bruises, they are incurable or anash. They are wickedly, woefully dirty and sinful he said and your macha or your wounds the carnage of our sins have produced wounds he said your wounds they are chala they are grievous they they make you sick they make you weak you become very fragile you have diseases but he, he reminds us there is none to plead for your cause no one cries the yah for you no one intercedes for you I'm glad that your shoe sits on the right hand to make intercession for Yisraya. No one pleads for you uh, that you may be bound up, mollified. You have no, to Allah, no healing, Yisraya. In essence, uh, there's no one to put bandage on you. You have no healing at all. You have no healing medicine, no remedies uh, at all. He was strengthening us to wait for the promise that should be. And that promise is the healing power of Yahshua HaMashiach. Well, I don't believe that. Well, I'm going to close in a minute or two. And I'll show you. He said, all your lovers, they have shachah. They have ignored you. They have forgotten you. They don't even seek you. Yah said, for I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy. Because you made yourself my enemy. And I've wounded you that way. I've caused the wounds to be, uh, caused you to be wounded and to be grievous. And those that you sought after, they don't even care for you. They're not even concerned about you at all. I've wounded you with the wounds of an enemy. He said, and with the musa, uh, uh, the musa or the chastisement, uh, or of a ach, ach zari, or a cruel individual. One that is cruel and inhumane. 
for the multitude of your avon, your sins transgressing the Torah, because your sins were increased. And then he says, why do you cry or you za'ach? And that's a cry for special help. Why do you cry, you, because of your affliction? Why do you cry for special help? Because uh, you are sheva, you are broken, you are fractured. And your sorrow, your mechob, your pain is incurable. He said, for the multitude of your iniquity, because your sins were increased. Yah said, I've done these things to you because you, you don't hear me. Because the testimony of Yahshua is not of any value or any importance. None whatsoever. And out of that Nobi's mouth, he calls one to utter the very beauty of the riches of our blessings. Here in the book of Yeshua, the book of Isaiah, 53, 5, I want to read that one verse. It says, Yeshua HaMashiach, he was Chala. I just, as studying today, this just dawned on me, the true power or the of the revelation of simplicity of this wound of Yahshua. I will tell you what this challah means here. It means this. He was wounded. He was wounded. In essence, the honor of Yahshua has been violated by us all, Yisrael. That is the challah. We have violated the honor of our Abba. We have out violated the honor of Yahshua HaMashiach. And he was wounded. He was dishonored for our fish, uh, our defiance of the Torah, our rebellion against Yah. And he was dacha. He was crushed and shattered. He was bruised now, crushed, but yet not one bone broken. He was crushed for our iniquity, our Torahlessness minds. And the Musa of our Shalom was upon him. And this is the Achilles heel of it all. It says, and with his Habura, Habura, with his stripes, the very blows, the very pains, the very agony, the very suffering, we are Rafa. We restore to the favor of Yah by his... Chabura, Mahis Chabura, we're restored to favor unto Yah. That's why we must always go back and remember the testimony. We can't lose the testimony in our bosom, Yisrael. We must always keep that testimony on our lips. We must. We must always go back to Nderecha or the way. We must always. The way that brings us to the fullness of the life of Torah. Because the testimony of Yahshua is alive, it's real. Uh, and there you don't have to look at 613 laws. Uh, there's the power of the law of your abiding in you. Uh, and you perform all that he has not taken one word back. He cannot take it back. It is required, mandated of us all here today. And through the power of that testimony. It's not the, the works of the law, the works of man, what they stipulate. It is the trueness of the fulfillment of the riches of the Torah that we perform. And the power of that testimony, the life, the will, the purpose of Yahshua. We don't have to look at it. It's alive in us. He has put it in us. By that power, the witness of Yahshua Hamashiach. And you cannot witness that power unless there's a confession unto Yah in his mighty name because he came uh, in his Abbas name. May the riches of Yah rest upon Kul Yisraya Mishwaha. May he strengthen you all. May he heal us all, Yisraya. And may we grow fat in the riches of his truth. Uh, and don't think that the machob, the pains, uh, are there to cause uh, delusion and to make you disillusional. Uh, it is there for you to go back to the testimonies of great power and deliverance, of great strength when no one was there, when all your lovers and friends uh, were gone. Uh, you could go back and he will cause a remedy to be fulfilled in our lives. Isn't that a great blessing? I like that. Hallelujah. That's all right. What a great blessing. What a great, wonderful blessing he grants unto us. It is all fulfilled. Yoshua Hamashiach.
You can't get it no other way, Yisra'ya. May the riches of your rest upon you all, you that have joined us tonight for the live broadcast. Greetings to you all in your Yeshua's mighty name. We do pray here from this small congregation that this simple truth uh, benefits you tonight and strengthen you and help you in your pursuit of the Sadiq, of the Sadiq, of the righteousness, of the character of your Yeshua HaMashiach in your life. Don't deny him. Don't be so easily persuaded. I want to do a teaching on what Shaul said to Timothy, a study, Lahak, show yourself approved. And that is one of the most misaligned uh, scriptures and teachings that we know today. And people are utilizing that for massive destruction of preaching. You don't leave a child to himself, to raise himself, because a child left himself will bring great shame. And they're telling individuals, you don't need anyone. You're a damn liar, man. These are liars. These are liars. You must hear in order to develop your mind. That little boy back there cannot talk unless he hears. He must hear. It develops the phonics. It develops his mind. And the mind of your show must be developed by hearing. And these are liars that are telling people that. I'm not going to tell you that. I will never listen to a man that tell me that. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to that man. Anyone tell you that? I'm going to bring it out. I'm going to show you what Shaul said unto this young man. He was young. And in our youthfulness, we all are full of folly. We're silly. And we think we know everything. I thought I knew more than my mother. She didn't know what was right. She didn't know what was best. She had experience. She knew what was best. And I thought I knew more than she did. No more than your daddy. I was telling him, I said, I had him out there yesterday, but I can't complain about his work. He didn't learn that on his own. He learned it from his daddy because he will work. That's where he learned it from. I know it's the truth. Get out of here, boy. Do some work. Hallelujah. I didn't break him down because he said to me yesterday, this is sweet here, Ray. I said, you got a thousand cabbage plants to plant. You'll find an easy way. You would have found this way too. You out here by yourself and trying to lay out 900 plus cabbage plants. You'll find an easy way. Or your back will be broke. Nobody's back was hurting yesterday. Sweet as cotton candy. I got it now. I got it. Thanks for the, uh, the knowledge of old Simeon. He did something one day laid out that I said, man, did that work? I said, let me look. Ah, we got it now. We can plant 10,000 plants in a day. Huh? You hurt no back, man. I got it. We got it, Yisra'ya. May I rock you all. Let us stand to our feet. It's 8.35 Zachim Yaramiya, all right? Hallelujah. Turn toward Yerushalayim. In all things, you, are, you said as Shalom prayed, if we lift our hands, raise our hands in this bayat, and pray toward the house that, that is built in your name, that you would answer and hear and you would heal your people. We ask you to heal Kul Yisra'ya scattered abroad throughout the nations of the earth uh, and every place you touch them and enrich them and grant unto them the fullness of your riches and your shield. Bless every home uh, and join us, those that love you, Yah. We pray for Kul Yisra'ya, your people. Touch us all and heal us all. Uh, and in all things in your machot, we give you Torah, for you shall not destroy your house. Uh, we confess all things in your name by the power your Yeshua Mashiach, because he confessed you, Yah. We told her you for all things in your sure's name. Take each one home safely. We rock you this night. We cry hallelujah. 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 Amen. Ya Yisrael.